back to a brand new episode of Virtual Coffee. My name is Alexa Collier and on this podcast I usually sit with small business owners and early career professionals and we chat about their story, passions, their businesses, but sometimes I also do solo episodes like the one we are having today. It's going to be just me chatting. But before we jump into it, as always, I'd really appreciate if you could rate and review Virtual Coffee on the Apple Podcast app if you haven't done so already. I think we're at 53 reviews. Let's see if we can get that to 100 by the end of the year. That'd be amazing. Uh, really helps others find our podcast and it only takes two seconds you can just go on apple podcast and hit that five star button uh, you can also follow us along on instagram and facebook other social medias it's all at virtual coffee podcast and as always thank you so much for listening to these episodes i really appreciate you checking in and listening to me talk <laughs> but for today Let's dive right in. We'll be talking about a framework called the 10 types of innovation. As I was walking my dog today, I was thinking, oh, it'd be fun to come up with a series name for these types of episodes because I've done other episodes on frameworks, just frameworks I use at work and in life and frameworks that I think everyone should know about and that can be really helpful uh, no matter what you do for work or no matter what you do in your life. Now those other episodes I did on various frameworks include a growth versus fixed mindset. That was episode 62. We also chatted about finding your why, episode 57. That one's kind of a framework. I don't know if I'd put it in this series. But anyways, I've been thinking about doing every once in a while solo episodes on various frameworks where I explain what the framework is and how you might be able to apply it in your life. So Maybe I'll call it Featured Framework or Framework Feature. I can't decide what one's best, but by the time you're listening to this, I'm sure I've decided if it's in the title. But for today, let's dive into the 10 Types of Innovation Framework. Now, this framework is by Doblin, which is a global innovation firm. It might be Doblin. I think I looked it up and maybe it said Doblin. We'll go with Doblin. Uh, But they are a global innovation firm. They're part of Deloitte, which is a big consulting firm. I'm sure you've heard of Deloitte. And they came up with the 10 types of innovation in 1998. So 10 types of innovation has been around for quite a while. Many companies, many teams, many people leverage it, including myself at work. I recently dug deep into it through a project I was doing and also spoke about it during a summit at work. I presented on the 10 types of innovation and that's kind of sparked this inspiration for this episode. Doblin launched 10 types around 1998, and really their why for launching this framework was they wanted to find a way to help others innovate better. Uh, They recognized that innovations often failed. They usually failed due to a lack of discipline, but not from a lack of creativity. So, so many teams are being creative, but They perhaps lacked that discipline to take the innovation forward, to take their idea forward, keep the momentum going. Um, And Doblin wanted to figure out a solution to help teams find that discipline, hence came along the 10 types. And all this information I'm sharing besides my applications of 10 types, later in the episode I'll get into how you can apply it to your life. That's from really my brain, but all this other information is from Doblin's website. I'll link it in the description of this episode so you can check it out. They have a great graphic online, a ton of information, and they also have a book. So 10 Types of Innovation is a book you can buy. I have it, looking at it right now, it's on my bookshelf. And they go into depth of other ways to leverage 10 types. I'm just gonna kind of touch the surface and make it applicable or easy to digest. So then if you want, you can go and research it further. So again, Doblin launched 10 types around 1998, so has been given plenty of time to be proven out and confirmed that it's a great framework to use, and it's all about following the discipline. So what 10 types is, is exactly that. It is 10 types, uh, 10 ways to innovate, 10 
areas to look at at how you or your team or your company or your product can become more innovative. The 10 types are broken up into three categories. So the three categories are configuration, offering, and experience. Now the configuration types, these really focus on the back end, the bones of a business, the backstage of a business or an organization. You can think of this as the innermost workings of an enterprise, like the people process tech behind the scenes that make things happen. That's the configuration category. The offering category is pretty much what it sounds like. It's what you offer your customers. So this is more looking at the services and products that you offer to your users or a bundle of your services and products. And then the third category, experience. This is the front end, what your users, what your customers see, the experience you're providing them, how you're engaging and communicating with your customers. So as you move from configuration to offering to experience, you really go from back end, back of the stage to front end, front of the stage is kind of how you can think about that spectrum. And so each of those three categories has specific types assigned to them. So taking a look at configuration, we have profit model, network, structure, and process. And I'm just going to describe them a bit here since I know this is audio-only podcast and you can't see the diagram I'm looking at at Doblin's website. But profit model is how you make money. So what are ways you can innovate in how you bring in revenue, how you make money? Network is how you connect with others to create value. So how can you expand your network or create partnerships that are unique or innovative in your industry or in your market? Structure is how you organize and align your talent and assets. So is there a way you can hire differently in a way that's never been done before or align your talent or employees in a way that's innovative? that makes your company or team shine above the rest. And the last type in the configuration category is process. So this is how you use methods to do your work, but methods that are innovative, that are superior, that are better than other processes that other companies or businesses leverage. That's the configuration category, has those four types in it. The offering category, so remember these are looking at products and services, you have product performance and product system. Those are the two types within that category. Now your product performance is how you develop distinguishing features and functionality. So what are unique features that no one's thought of before or no one's offered within your specific product before? How can you be innovative in that way? And then there's your product system, how you create complementary products and services? How can you combine them or bundle them in a way that's different? So those are the two in the offering category. And finally, you have experience. Experience has four types, service, channel, brand, and customer engagement. So service is how you support the value of your offerings, how you can amplify that value. Uh, So how can you essentially service your customers better and bring them, amplify more value to them through what you offer. Channel is how you deliver your offerings to your customers. So can you deliver them in a different way that, again, they've never received in that way before? And we'll dive into some examples in a second. Brand is how you represent your offering. So how might you be able to become a well-known brand, a go-to brand? When people see your logo, they know they're getting an amazing experience. And finally, the last type is customer engagement, how you foster compelling interactions. So how can you engage with your customers in a new way or communicate with them in an innovative way um, that they typically aren't talked to by other companies or aren't used to being communicated or engaged in that way? So those are the 10 types of innovation. And one of the really unique things about this framework is, yes, it's important to take a look at a specific type and begin to understand how you can innovate or offer something different in that type. So maybe you're looking at how can I make money differently and change my revenue model or how can I change my brand so that it's more innovative and more of a market differentiator. But the beauty of 10 types and what makes it unique and different from other frameworks like this is it encourages you to innovate across the three categories. So you don't just want to innovate with your profit model. You want to look at how can we innovate our profit model and our product performance and our brand. Now you have a really innovative offering 
that innovates in multiple ways and not just one. And the reason behind that, why you want to innovate across the categories, is so that your offering or your service isn't easy to copy or how you're innovating isn't easy to copy. So an example of that of how it went wrong is Toyota. Now they innovated in the process type within configuration category by using lean methodologies and processes. They were you know, one of the first car companies to do that. It really uh, made them excel in the way they created cars and manufactured and they just really created an innovative process in the car industry that hadn't been seen before. But that's the only type that they focused on. And so quickly, other car companies were like, wow, that's working for Toyota. I bet we could figure it out. And they did. And so now, yes, Toyota is still a really big brand, but there are plenty other big car companies out there. Toyota is not you know, number one. It's not the only car company that stands out. And many, many car companies now use lean processes and lean methodologies because Toyota only focused on that one type and only stayed there, only innovated there, they were so easy to copy. Now, taking a look at more successful example, and again, these examples really can be found on Doblin's website, um, so feel free to dive into them more. But uh, another example is Netflix. Now, Netflix completely redefined the video rental industry. People were used to having to drive to Blockbuster, get in their car, pack their families up, go pick out a movie, come back watch it, return the movie, etc. Start the cycle all over. But Netflix, first they completely innovated within their profit model. They created that subscription service where you could subscribe to Netflix and get video games delivered to you. And that is innovative in another category or another type of channel, how you are delivering your offerings to your customers. Netflix decided, I'm going to bring the videos to you you no longer have to drive to Blockbuster. They're going to arrive directly to your door. So they innovated in their profit model with their subscription model and their channel and the way that they were delivering products to you. And of course, they have you know other innovations. Network, they partner with various companies to show you know exclusive content. For example, I know Taylor Swift has some uh, videos and movies on Netflix that you can only watch on Netflix. Like that's a great way to network and provide something that only Netflix has and that draws customers in and that's innovative. Netflix is definitely one of the top streaming services, if not the top streaming service, because of the ways they innovated across the types and are constantly innovating. Now, with that being said, Netflix has to be careful because clearly other streaming services are catching up. So Netflix might be staying stagnant in some of these innovations and now other companies are able to copy them innovate on top of Netflix's original innovations and they're starting to beat out Netflix and become a superior offering, a superior streaming service. So 10 types helps you just constantly stay on top of innovating and doing the next thing, staying ahead of your competitors. Now I wanted to dive a bit into how you listening to this might be able to start to tackle or leverage the 10 types of innovation and really use this framework. So if you're a small business owner or a part of a small business or supporting a small business, I think this is pretty directly applicable to what you do. You can take a look at your business model and, and your offerings and products and see where can you innovate? What can you do that's different than your industry or what other small businesses in your industry are doing? Is there a way you can be differentiated in your brand or the way you package your products and services together in a bundle that hasn't been seen before. And something that's also helpful, again, on Doblin's website, they actually dive into the 10 types and give examples of types of profit models that you can leverage or types of customer engagements or types of processes. And you can look at that list and kind of pick and choose, okay, this would work really well for my business that I'm not doing yet that I think is innovative and something different, something I haven't seen from my competitors. So that list is really helpful. So I think if you know, you're know you running a small business or any business, this can be really helpful for you in a way that you can stand out in the marketplace and stay ahead and stay relevant and really shine above your competitors. I think there's an opportunity too. I haven't really leveraged this myself, but Again, was kind of inspired on 
my walk with my dog and conversations with various colleagues of how you can leverage the 10 types of innovation for you as an individual, like in your personal life. Um, so it that's kind of an indirect application. But for example, I'm thinking network. Like, is there a way that I can connect with others to create value that's different than a typical LinkedIn message? Hey, can you catch up over coffee for 10 minutes? Like, how boring is that, right? How many messages do you get of that in a day? Is there a different way I can network or build my network or structure my network? Is there a different way I can represent my personal brand and what I offer to the world? Can I innovate in in the brand type? Or is there a way I can engage with my colleagues or who I want to serve in a different way as a person, not as a business, but as a person? So I think there's an opportunity there to look at the 10 types and understand how to innovate in your own life within these 10 categories. Um, So I'm going to definitely dive into that a bit further personally and just see what what that would look like. Um, Something else that 10 Types dives into specifically in their book is leveraging the framework to look at industry trends. So I think this is really helpful if you're a small business owner or even if you're just on a team in the corporate world and whatever industry you're in, being able to look at that industry and understand where companies are innovating and then where are their gaps that you can then fulfill, that you as the small business owner or you as a team member or you as a CEO, like what are the innovation gaps that you can fulfill and then provide something different to customers that customers now gravitate towards you because there was a gap that wasn't being filled for them, but now you're filling it in an innovative way. So the book really dives deep into that on how to take a look at an industry and leverage the 10 types to find the innovation trends. So I thought that was interesting as well. So I know I kind of really gave a high level overview of 10 types and some examples, which is really what I wanted to do. I just wanted to hop on here and kind of ramble about 10 types for a bit. But I at least hope you learned enough to be interested in learning a bit more and checking out Doblin's website. Again, I'll link it in the podcast description. Definitely look a bit deeper into the framework just because I think it's so helpful even just to switch your mindset of looking for certain innovations and how companies do certain things and what they're missing. It's really interesting once you start diving into some examples of the companies that stand out and why others don't. And now you're seeing smaller companies rising up in their specific industry and how are they doing that well they're innovating in a way that the big companies aren't and soon those big companies if they don't leverage 10 types and change something that they're doing they're going to get taken over by these smaller companies that are coming up so definitely check out this framework on your own and let me know what you think about it Leave a comment, write a review with your thoughts. I'd love to chat more with you about the 10 types. Again, this was just an introduction to it. Just what's been top of my mind with 10 types, a kind of more casual discussion about it than than what I gave last week in a formal presentation about 10 types. But nonetheless, a very important framework to check out whether you're a small business owner or an entrepreneur or an employee, a team member, a teammate, a boss, a manager check out this framework. As always, thank you guys so much for listening to me today. Again, would love to connect with you on social media. Let me know what you think. And I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Talk to you next week.